Hello and welcome to Written Words. In this lesson, which is from our regional English series, we look at the, some of the differences between UK and US English. So we're looking at specifically differences in vocabulary, spelling, grammar and usage. So first of all, it must be said that the English that is spoken in Britain and in the US is the same. It's the same language. It's the same but different. British people and American people can converse very easily together and understand each other very well. American TV and film and music is very popular in the UK and vice versa. British TV, film and music is very popular in the US. So the two variants are generally understood very well on both sides of the water. Also, transatlantic travel is easier now than it ever was. So people travel between the two more frequently. However, when it comes to actually speaking the language rather than just understanding it, we do have some slightly different tendencies. Probably the easiest way to tell an American from a British person is the accent. Obviously, there are regional variations in American accents and British accents, but it is obvious straight away which side of the Atlantic a person is from when you hear them speak. However, telling the two versions apart when they're written down can be slightly more tricky. So here are some things to look out for. First of all, there is the vocabulary. There are many words which are specific to US or UK English. And you only need to do an in internet search to find that the internet is absolutely awash with all kinds of lists comparing UK and US vocabulary. Then there is the spelling. Some words have slightly different spellings in the UK and the US. For example, words ending in eyes, such as realize, are spelt with an I-Z-E at the end in the US and an I-S-E in the UK. Words ending in O-U-R in the UK spelling drop the U in the US spelling, for example, colour or favour. And also there are often differences in the use of double letters in spelling. For example, fulfill is spelt with a single L at the end in the UK spelling, but with a double L in the US spelling. Even when the words themselves remain the same, there are some subtle differences in usage as well. For example, Americans might say um, Monday through Friday. Whereas in Britain, we would say from Monday until Friday. Americans might arrange to meet their friend on the weekend. Whereas in Britain, we would arrange to meet our friend at the weekend. Different than is commonly used in the US as opposed to different from, which we would use in the UK, or different to. Already is often used for emphasis in the US. For example, enough already, but it isn't used that way in the UK. Already is only used in the sense of meaning something in the, that's happened in the past. Gotten is the past tense of get in the US, but in the UK, the past tense of get is got. So having looked at some of the main differences between UK and US English, I'm going to read a short extract from a short story called Cat Person by Kristen Rupenian and see if you can work out whether this story is taking place in America or in Britain. Margot met Robert on a Wednesday night toward the end of her fall semester. She was working behind the concession stand at the artsy movie theatre downtown when he came in and bought a large popcorn 
and a box of red vines. That's an unusual choice, she said. I don't think I've ever actually sold a box of red vines before. Flirting with her customers was a habit she'd picked up back when she worked as a barista and it helped with tips. She didn't earn tips at the movie theatre, but the job was boring otherwise and she did think Robert was cute. So I read the extract in my usual British accent, so there, there were no clues there. But what are the clues in the actual text that tell us whether this is American or British? There are some words in there that are glaringly obvious if you know what you're looking for. In the first sentence, for example, Margot met Robert on a Wednesday night toward the end of her fall semester. Fall is a season of the year between summer and winter in America. In the UK, we call it autumn. Also, um, in the US, in the, in the US, in the education system, the, the academic year is divided usually into semesters, whereas in the UK, we tend to divide them, divide it into terms. The story goes on and says she was working behind the concession stand at the artsy movie theatre. A concession stand is something we don't really have in the UK. We would call it um, a snack kiosk or a snack counter. So a concession stand is an American term. And also a movie theatre in the UK would be a cinema. And then he came in and he bought a large popcorn. Popcorn is something which is associated with American culture very often, although we do have it in the UK. And a box of red vines. Red vines are a kind of candy or sweets, um, which are widely available in America, but not in the UK. So we can tell from just from those first two sentences that this story is actually taking place in America. Now for our language focus, let's look at some of the terms which are specific to the UK and the US. As I've already mentioned, if you look online, there are hundreds of lists available of UK and US terms, and some of them are very, very long. There are a lot of words, but here are just a few to give you a flavor. In America, people might live in an apartment Whereas in Britain, they would live in a flat. Red vines, we've already mentioned, are candy in the US, but sweets in Britain. Americans would put their trash in the trash can, whereas here we would put our rubbish in the bin. If you want to go from a low floor to a high floor or back down again, you would use an elevator in America but in Britain, you would use a lift. Subway is an interesting word because the subway in America is what we would call the underground in Britain, particularly in London. What we would call a subway in Britain is what Americans would call an underpass. It's just a little tunnel to walk underneath a road. Vest is another word that means different things on different sides of the Atlantic. A vest in America is, is a smart item of clothing, which in Britain we would call a waistcoat. What we would call a vest in Britain is a kind of sleeveless undershirt. Pants in America are what we would call trousers here in Britain. And what we would call trousers in, what we would call pants in Britain is what you would wear underneath your trousers. A faucet is a tap in Britain and Americans would put their luggage in the trunk of their car whereas we would put our luggage in the boot. Fries in America are called chips in Britain and chips in America are what British people would call crisps. So that's just a little flavour of some of the words that are specific to each side of the Atlantic. Now for our writing prompt for this lesson. 
Imagine that an American and a British person find themselves sitting together on a flight from London to New York. And imagine the conversation that takes place between them. The characters can be real or imagined and the conversation can be humorous or serious. But most importantly, try to make the American person sound American and the British person sound British. So perhaps go back over some of the things we've talked about already. Have a look for some lists of vocabulary that are specific to the US and the UK so that you can add flavour to each person's conversation. And finally, don't forget to download a copy of the worksheet which recaps all the things we've discussed in this lesson and also includes some further reading that might be of use to you. Thank you very much for watching. I look forward to seeing you in the next lesson and in the meantime, happy writing.